Is your laptop running low on space or feeling a little bit sluggish with the factory SSD? Well, today I'm going to show you how to install a new SSD into your laptop and get everything migrated over using Ezus Disk Copy. So we're going to need a few things to start. And first off, we're going to need our new drive. Now you're also going to need a good small screwdriver set. I have one here that also has some additional tools that'll be helpful for taking apart our laptop and then some kind of SSD enclosure in order to do the copy. Now, if your laptop has an additional open slot that you can put your SSD into, you don't need the enclosure, but in case your laptop only has one or both drives are already populated, you're gonna need one of these. Now, I also suggest you back up important files, and then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab Ezus Disk Copy. You will not need your Windows key for this because Windows will still be activated after the copy, but if you do wanna be sure, you can go ahead and make sure that Windows is activated and linked to your Microsoft account. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect our SSD to our laptop. And depending on the enclosure, this process might be a little bit different, but most of them are pretty similar. We're just gonna go ahead and open up our enclosure. We're gonna go ahead and put our little piece here on the end. And then we're gonna slot in our SSD and lock it in. Then from there, we're just gonna go ahead and plug it in. Now this is what EZUS Disk Copy looks like when you go ahead and open it up for the first time. We have our current OS drive, which is the disk zero, and then we have the new drive, which is four times the size at four terabytes, which is here on disk two. Now, as you can see on the left here, we have a disk mode and a system mode, and those are both useful for different situations. Disk mode is going to copy your entire disk. No matter the number of partitions, it is gonna to try to copy them all over to the new drive. It is a full backup of a disk. It'll allow you to upgrade to a larger disk and it'll completely migrate all data on that disk to the new disk. The data included is gonna be all partitions, all settings, all data, your OS, your boot sector, and all unused space. This is going to take a lot longer in terms of the time required, but it is an exact one-to-one -one copy. Now the system clone, however, is only going to copy over the system related partitions. So if you have additional partitions on your drive, other than the system recovery and the C drive, it will not copy over those additional partitions. This is really helpful because it'll only migrate the OS to the other disc and it's great for creating a bootable disk for emergency use. This method will also take less time if you do have additional partitions on your disk. Now, before we start, if you have BitLocker enabled on your disk, you're gonna wanna use disk mode and not system mode because in disk mode, we have the option of sector by sector copy. This will allow the new drive to still have BitLocker properly enabled and you won't run it into any issues and the sector by sector copy option is not available in system mode. So do keep that in mind if you do have BitLocker enabled. So for today, we're gonna to be using system mode. And as we can see at the top here, it'll tell us that we need a target disk that has at least 879.62 gigabytes of space on it. We are well over that with 3.72 terabytes. So we're good here. Disk two is the drive that we wanna use and it's showing that disk zero is our source drive. So that's pretty great. And we're just gonna make sure that disk two is selected. We're gonna press next. And auto fit the disk is gonna be the best setting in this window here because what it's gonna do is it's going to stretch the main partition to fill up as much space as possible while keeping the other partitions the same size. Those partitions don't need to get any larger on a larger disk, but having the main partition have more space allows you to put more stuff on that drive whereas the system and the recovery can just stay the same size. So auto fit the disc is gonna be your best option here. So we're just gonna press proceed. It's gonna tell us that the data on the target disc is going to be erased. We're just gonna go ahead and press continue. Now the time it's gonna take for this process to complete is gonna depend on multiple factors, like the amount of data that you're copying over, 
the speed of the drives that you're copying to and from, the speed of the interfaces that both your original drive and your new drive are using during the copy process, and just the overall speed of your computer is all gonna determine how long this will copy, but it shouldn't take too long. All right, so I let it copy overnight and woke up to the system being finished and it mentions that you clone the system to a USB drive. Do you wanna boot the system from a USB drive? You typically shouldn't do this. And so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and shut down the PC. We're gonna move that drive into the actual laptop. So we're just gonna go ahead and press no. We're gonna press finish. And we're gonna go ahead and shut down. Now we're gonna go ahead and replace the internal drive by opening up our laptop and replacing the NVMe that's already in there with the one that we just copied to. Now, if you have an anti-static mat like I have here, as well as an anti-static wristband, it's a good idea to use these while working on any computer electronics. But if you do not have that, make sure that you're keeping yourself in a low static environment. You're not doing this on top of carpet where you can build up a lot of static. And if you have a spare power supply, or anything that you can keep plugged into a wall, that's a really good point for you to touch and keep yourself grounded. So let's go ahead and get this open. Now the opening process is gonna be very dependent on the laptop you have. So it is a good suggestion to look up an instruction video on how to open up your particular laptop. Some laptops will just be some screws. Some of them are gonna be some screws and some clips. This one has some clips in it. And I'm gonna show you how I open this Lenovo Legion 5i. So what I'm gonna be using to open up my laptop is a small Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of tweezers that'll just help me grab some of the screws, and then a plastic pick that will help me disengage some of the clips. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew all of our screws. Now it's a good idea to keep the location of your screws somewhere on the side so that you know where they have to go back once you're done. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna use a plastic pick to release the clips along the outer shell of this laptop. So this is the easiest spot for me to start. And I just go around the laptop like so. And you can see it slowly releasing from the main body. And there we are. Now the first thing that you should do while working on the inside of your laptop is disconnecting the battery from the mess rest of the board. And that is with this cable here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and slide this out. And there we are, our power is disconnected. Now what we wanna do is we wanna locate where our NVMe drives are. And I actually have two NVMe drive slots on this laptop. I have one here and I have one here. So we're just gonna go ahead and uncover these both. So I know that this is my main OS drive, this one terabyte drive. So this is the one that we're gonna go ahead and replace. So all we're gonna do is just go ahead and undo the screw on the end here. And unslot this drive. And then we're gonna grab the drive that we copied to. We're gonna slot it right back into that same slot. We're gonna grab our screw. And screw that one in. Like so, making sure that it's nice and flush and that you don't see any of the connections sticking out. Now all we have to do is just put this plate back on and get our laptop closed back up. Now while you have the laptop open and before you get it closed, it is probably a good idea to give your fans a dusting if they look as dusty as mine do. And now we should plug in our power once more. Make sure that that's fully seated. We can go ahead and just do the reverse order of taking apart our shell. Go ahead, get it to snap in if you have clips.
Now we're gonna go ahead, get this thing booted back up. Now, if all things are well, then you should be able to boot right back into your computer. And we can see that our OS drive is now our four terabyte drive. However, if you failed to get back into your OS when you booted after replacing your SSD, double check your BIOS to make sure that your BIOS is booting from the correct device. So for example, in my BIOS here, I can go ahead and select my boot device. And I wanna go ahead and make sure that it is the right drive. So it should say Windows Boot Manager on it. Every BIOS is gonna be a little bit different, however. So that might be a little bit different for you. There is also a boot device option in here where I can go ahead and look at them in more detail. There is also the ability for me to look at a more expanded BIOS and I can go ahead and go to configuration. I do also have an expanded BIOS on this laptop and I can go ahead and go down to boot and we're gonna go ahead and go into there. And we can select our boot manager from here. So every BIOS is gonna look a little bit different, but you should be able to figure out which drive is your new drive. And it's also named here as well to make it a little bit easier and make sure that that is the primary boot device on your laptop. Now that we've confirmed that we've been able to boot into our new drive correctly, what do we wanna do with our old drive? And two things that are my favorite ways to use older NVMe drives or older drives in general is either using them as a portable drive or a backup drive. Now you can use these enclosures just as I, as I used earlier to do the transfer and you can use these as a really great portable drive. They are large in capacity, they are fast, and they're great for a lot of things. I use it for all of my video editing, but you can also use it as a really great backup drive to backup important files. Maybe next time you want to move your OS, you can backup all your important files onto this drive before going ahead and doing your transfer. If you're planning to upgrade the SSD in your laptop, go ahead and check out Eza's disk copy down in the description below. But if you're using this video as a guide to help you through this process, I really do hope it helped. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave those down in the comment section below and we will be happy to help you as quickly as we can.